affected communities. Now, very often when you talk at this level, you're in a position where you begin to say, how do you tie it together? And I found a demo is probably the best way to do that. So what I'd like to do is have Jim Grubb, our chief demonstration officer, come out on stage. Jim, how you doing? Morning, John. Now, I don't want to make you nervous. Okay. I know we're using a lot of new technology in this demo. We are. You're pretty comfortable it's going to work? I'm very comfortable, John. Tell me what you have planned for us. All right. Well, John, we're going to start by taking a look at our unified compute system. And uh, we brought one here. This is a pretty heavy box, though, so I'm going to borrow your clicker and use a couple of slides just to give you a quick tour of this system. So here's the front of the box uh, uh, with the servers in the 4RU and the power supplies down here at the bottom. Let's go ahead and spin that box around and take a look at the back. First of all, four hot swappable, replaceable fans. And then we have our fabric extender cards. These are very important. We're going to talk about this in a minute. These are the high-speed I.O. capability that we've added to the box. This is a network-centric uh, box, very specifically. Now, we're also going to take a look at uh, the memory architecture. I'm going to slide one of the server cards out here. And we're going to take a look at Cisco's extended memory technology. Now, why is that important? Well, you know, oftentimes we're trying to solve performance problems by adding more CPUs when, in fact, what we really need is more I.O. from a memory perspective or from a network perspective. Cisco's extended memory architecture, if I zoom in a little bit, gives us the ability to address four times the amount of memory than you could address in a typical system. Here's a and I'm going to show some data a little bit later on that backs that up in terms of benchmarks. That's right. Ahead. Here's a typical system. So both from a performance perspective as well as an overall capacity perspective. In our Cisco UCS solution, we can address 384 gigabytes using 8 gig DIMMs. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, if you want to use lower cost DIMMs, lower density DIMMs, the 4 gigabyte DIMMs, for example, have typically cost per gigabyte about half what an 8 gigabyte DIMM costs. You can load this box up and you can still run a, a 192 gigs fully configured with four gigabyte DIMMs at a higher performance level than you could with a typical system. So it's the classic approach of how you can combine networkers with process, network That's processing right. capability with storage. That's right. We've done that with some very specific ASICs that we yes. worked with Intel on to put them into this box. Mm -hmm. Now, back to these fabric extender cards. These, these fabric extender cards connect uh, back up to our UCS interconnect, which is typically at the top of the rack, as you see here. And this gives us eight uh, 10 gigabyte ports, uh, and we multiply that times two because you can put two of these cards. Now, we just a month ago announced the eight port card, so we went from 40 gigabytes to 80 gigabytes, giving the entire box 160 gigabytes of network capacity for a single chassis. So that, this is really quite amazing, and this effectively eliminates our network bottlenecks. And by the way, we trunk these pipes and we multiplex the different kinds of signals across these pipes. So you can take which, which typically in the past was a separate network interface card for your, uh, moving your hypervisors around uh, or your Oracle rack cluster uh, and your SAN, which is fiber channel. We, we multiplex all of this onto these 10 gigabit pipes so that we now have the ability to m uh, modulate the usage. We can use any or all of that network traffic, not only times 10, but actually times 160 gigabytes across the entire box. So we're talking about now removing the bottlenecks of memory, removing the bottlenecks of network bandwidth in this very high-performance computing box. And so we talked earlier about Cisco is probably the largest user of Oracle business applications of any high-tech company. And it's a great partnership we have. But you also suddenly begin to see with this type of architecture why they use this in their data centers for the same type of productivity exactly. and cost savings. Exactly. Jim, I got I'll it. Back to you, John. If you mm -hmm. join me here, uh, next what I want to talk about is provisioning the box. So we're going to take a look at our UCS com uh, system manager. Mm -hmm. And this allows us so you're readdressing to, to be able to do things at much lower cost, both from equipment perspective, but what you're setting us up for now is also from operational that's right, perspective. That's right. That's right. So this allows us to configure these modules. So, for example, I can look at an individual chassis like the one that we have here on stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I can take a look at the uh, interconnect modules here, the I.O. I can take a look at an individual server. I can see what CPUs are in that server, what motherboard, uh, what processor. Here's the CPUs. I can look at the memory configuration that we talked about. 
And what's most interesting is that I have the ability to configure all of this virtually. I can apply what we call a service profile to this box. Now, the service profile, you know, this is the typical 40 to 50 settings that you might have to uh, establish the BIOS and the network and all of the different I.O. and all those capabilities. These can all be pre predefined. And this, oh, by the way, it gives you consistent policy for your box and time. your network How as long well. would have this taken before, Jim? Well, this might have taken a couple of days. Typically, it would be done by, you know, more than one engineer or, or uh, uh, administrator to be able to set this up. And we've just applied all of that technology, and it's loading onto that box very quickly here. And it's just as quick to reprovision a server if you want to use it for another different uh, application as well. So removing the bottlenecks, making it easy, taking the cost out of it of managing the boxes as so well. So this says, Jim, you don't need as much budget next year as we had planned for you, and you can give part of it back to me? Or uh, I can be more effective with the budget that I have, John. Let's put it that way. Okay. Now, <laughs> now finally, I want to show you, uh, let's move into the application space. And I'm going to open up uh, eBusiness Suite here, and I'm going to approve a PO. You were talking. So this is the Oracle eBusiness right. Suite. That's yes. right. And you were talking earlier about um, video being pervasive. We're going to yes. give you an example of that. So I'm going to go into iProcurement. And remember, and we're going way beyond pervasive. We're really saying it's going to be the platform for the future for all that's of right. what we used to call IT. That's right. That's right. We'll see if we're right or wrong every okay. time. Okay, so let's take a look at this purchase requisition. Now, I could, you know, I get data here. I see that we've received this new subassembly. It's a relatively expensive part, um, but we have received it, so I could go ahead and approve it. But before I approve it, through the use of MediaNet, like you talked about earlier, we have semantically tagged video where the uh, quality inspection technician um, was actually inspecting that part. So this makes it easy to use and easy to consume. This That's is right. the first step in that. That's right. Okay. So now we actually see the inspection that is happening to that. meets incoming inspection of three and a half inches plus one tenth right. minus nothing. And now we have video documentation tied into that database entry. So instead of just going out and putting a stamp on it, this is much more effective. And then right. you can actually share your expert, experts this way more effectively. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if we want to take this one step further, I'm going to show you how we have a recorded meeting where the specifications were determined for that part. Now, this brings me, again, through the semantic tagging, the use of MediaNet capability, this brings me into video where I can actually search through the video. So our MediaNet technology automatically transcribes video, does machine transcription of video, and then we can search on individual words, and this will take us to any point in the video where the word uh, tolerance, so we can determine what that original tolerance of the part was supposed to be. Let's go so ahead this listen. is a way to search or a way to push it out to common communities of interest that are trying That's to right. solve a business opportunity or a business exactly. problem. Exactly. To a tenth of an inch. That level of dimensional tolerance will be easy for us to meet. We can actually s move right to the point in the video. Tolerances will drive up the cost. So you can see that we have the ability to search into video. We can even search, for example, on just a particular uh, user. In this case, I clicked on Jared here. You can see these color codes are the different users. So this was a Cisco telepresence collaboration where the engineers were collaborating on the part, making the determination on, on those tolerances, and then having all of this data for us as we go to uh, approve this, uh, this part, which I can now do without any concern at all because we've seen all of, all of the information. Now, one last thing, John, I want to show you here. Um, this is an application... Uh, this application, let's take now from semantic tagging going down to adding got a it. database triplet to an individual video frame. So indexing an individual video frame so we can run an application. This, so this is an example in London, if I'm yeah, recognizing that's right. it right? That's right. This, this camera right here, this is a special uh, multiband infrared camera from a company called Vehicle Occupancy. And this camera gives us the ability to actually see into cars so you can see how many people are in the car. So in this case, let me go ahead and just play this at a stop frame rate. We can measure the number of people that are in a given car. Using machine vision, we can read the license plate. We can correlate that information to whether or not they have a transponder, mm -hmm. and then we can decide whether we want to charge them a toll. And we can do that on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. So we're down to actually tagging individual frames of video. This is uh, the kind of applications that when you tie them together, for example, with 
traffic sensors. So here's London. They've got the Olympics coming up. And we're the proud infrastructure provider. That's there. right. As a matter of fact, we provide a lot of that video capability mm -hmm. and infrastructure. They've got video cameras, traffic sensors. They're looking at license plates. They're reading. This is the kind of big data problem we've been hearing about at the conference this week. Yes. That only Cisco's UCS technology, eliminating those bottlenecks of memory and bandwidth, that that really are needed to apply to this kind of application. And that's what Larry talked a little bit on Sunday night, that's too, right. in terms that's of big right. data. That's so right. what you're really saying, Jim, is that it's an architectural play where you tie together yeah. the pieces. This is a smart connected community. You just use the example of safety and security and traffic flow. That's right. And the same thing can apply to education or other things. Now, John, we have brought with us uh, an architectural diagram just to show the, the complexity here of being able to pull these all together, because it's not just the high performance but you need to be able to do that with the security and the mobility and the video capabilities that we can bring all together through Cisco technology. Jim, well done. I got it. Thank, Thank you, you very John. much. And everything worked, which is very important. Great. Thank you, John. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who have ever done demos with new uh, software, you know what it's like when you get up on stage. You sweat a little bit and you hope it comes out well.